One of the things that's become really important in the commercial drone industry over the last few years is accuracy. People are capturing data with drones and saying that they can achieve centimeter, millimeter level accuracy with their drone. Uh, or the measurements that come out of the 3D models are accurate to X percent in, their, in terms of the margin of error. But what does accuracy actually mean? And instead of throwing around the accuracy word, can, is there a way to understand it a bit better so that we're not biased by accurate drone maps and models all the time? We'll have a look in this video. Hey everyone, my name is Baro and I'm the founder and CEO at Hammer Missions. And in this video, what I want to do is I want to try and explain the different types of accuracy uh, that are involved in capturing data using commercial drones. Not all accuracies are built the same. Some accuracies are, are, are referencing something and other accuracies are referencing something completely different. Uh, one of the issues that I find sometimes in the drone industry is that uh, we've got uh, professionals who are using the same word accuracy for different things and actually what they need to start doing is sort of understanding what kind of accuracy uh, they're they're talking about and making sure that they're aligned with their client or stakeholder so that everyone is talking about the same accuracy and there is less confusion and uh, and less sort of overall noise so uh, what I want to do is I want to talk about two different types of accuracy in this video. The first type of accuracy is essentially the georeferencing accuracy of a droid map or a model. What we mean by georeferencing accuracy is basically if you have a drone that's taking images, uh, maybe in a grid flight pattern to create a map uh, or a double grid with oblique images to create a 3D model, then the accuracy of the model or the map that is produced by the software uh, can be measured by looking at how good is that map or model geolocated or georeferenced with respect to the real world. So you can almost think of it as if you had a base map and now you want to peg a new map on top of this base map, how well it aligns or positions itself with the real world. And that is basically what we mean by georeferencing accuracy. And ultimately, georeferencing accuracy comes from accuracy of the images. Uh, how accurate are they in terms of where they were taken and where what where they were sort of tied back to, so to speak? To be able to get really high quality uh, or highly accurate uh, data for uh, georeferencing accuracy, what you need to do is you need to use one of the three methods that have emerged over the last few years. Uh, one of the methods is uh, ground control points, also known as GCPs. This method involves placing known markers on the site and measuring their locations using third-party equipments um, to be able to, something like a base station, for example, to be able to understand their true location coordinate in the real world. Um, that's one method. Another method is RTK drones, which are essentially... Uh, drones that have a special type of GNSS receiver, the RTK receiver, uh, which works alongside a base station and allows you to trian allows you to triangulate the drone's actual location um, in 3D space uh, using satellite data, which essentially all talk to each other, which I'm showing in this graphic. Um, and the third look third method is PPK, which is similar to RTK, but instead of the triangulation or corrections to happen in real time they actually happen in the post processing step so in summary there is this type of accuracy which has got to do with georeferencing maps and models just got to do with how well do your outputs actually align with the real world uh, and that's what we mean when we refer to georeferencing accuracy now that is completely different to the accuracy of measurements that come out from from drone data. So if you're mapping or a site or if you're modeling a building, if you're looking to measure a roof or measure stockpiles or measure uh, a facade uh, or anything for that matter, the measurement accuracy actually does not have too much to do with georeferencing accuracy. The measurement accuracy basically is 
how precise is your measurement? Uh, is your measurement within X percent margin of error from the ground truths? Uh, or is it Y percent? And, you know, what are those X and Y values and how big could, can they get? So it's more to do with tolerances. It's more to do with how precise or accurate the measurement needs to be for what the end use case is. Uh, if you try and do a cut and fill exercise, maybe there's a certain tolerance for your stockpile measurement. If you're trying to do some renovation work on a property, maybe the, the tolerances are completely different. So it all depends on what level of accuracy you need. But the point being that measurement accuracy is different to uh, the, the first type of accuracy, which has got to do with your referencing. And the other thing to, to consider here is that actually with georeferencing accuracy, what you need is better positioning of the drone and better refer georeferencing of the images. Whereas with measurement accuracy, what you need is better resolution of the data, which is where things like GSD, which is ground sampling distance, comes in. So we made a whole video on ground sampling distance. In fact, that was a, the very first video that I made uh, on this channel. So if you want to explore ground sampling distance, I, I recommend uh, checking out that video. The ground sampling distance in a nutshell is essentially to do with how much ground or surface area of a certain object is visible in a particular image. And once you have that number, it kind of gives you the resolution or the quantity of the data. So if you're closer to a structure, typically you're going to get more of that structure, more of that surface, more of that ground in the images. And therefore the quality will be higher. And typically that allows you to do better measurements because the mapping or the modeling can be better. Now, it's not always the case, uh, but if you're doing, for example, a stockpile measurement, for example, some of our experiments have shown that if you don't have a certain GSD, if you're not low enough in your GSD, you won't be able to make accurate enough measurements. Now, that is completely different to uh, the accuracy of the, the map of the model in terms of georeferencing. So you could have a map that is actually not very well georeferenced, but still accurate enough to do measurements of. The same goes for a model and vice versa. You know, you could have uh, a really highly um, georeferenced map or model, but you're not, you can't really use it for um, measurements because the, the accuracy for measurements is not high enough. And finally, you could have the best of both worlds. You could have a, a high accurate map or model, both in terms of georeferencing accuracy, as well as in measurements accuracy. And that's when, you know, you can say that map or model is very, very accurate and it can be used for X, Y, and Z use case. Uh, I think what's really important to, uh, to think about here is that not every project requires accuracy of both types. Not every project needs to be accurate in X or Y. Uh, for example, if you're doing something more inspection related, you don't really need that level of accuracy. I think for inspection, what you really care about is the condition of the asset. Uh, what you really care about is um, what are the defects like and where they are. And maybe some of the measurements, accuracy or the georeferencing is not materially important. So it really boils down to knowing your use case and knowing what you what type of accuracy you need for it, if you need accuracy at all for, uh, for that matter. So, uh, so I hope that this video sheds more lights on different types of accuracies that we're seeing in the drug industry and uh, what I want to be able to communicate is that it's all about the right drone, the right tool for the right job and as long as you understand that use case and understand what the client or the stakeholder you're working with requires, you're able to deliver quality results, uh, you're able to build great in-house drone programs and that's basically how we're able to get efficient in collecting high quality data. Thanks so much for watching. If this was interesting, give us a like. Uh, if you think somebody else might benefit from learning more about drone accuracies who are still understanding this concept or grappling with it, then feel free to share this video with them. Uh, I'm Barum from Habermissions, Missions, uh, and we essentially do, we make software that allows you to collect high quality drone data and process that data into a map or a model. And it can be accurate in georeferencing or in measurements. Uh, if you've got any questions for us, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. Uh, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video of Knowledge Hub.